Hello, and in this lesson, we're going to continue building on VPC basics and understanding how VPCs work by taking a look at network access control lists. We're going to talk specifically about its definitions, function, how to create a network access control list, and most importantly, managing network access control list rules. So first, let's take a look at what the definition is for a network access control list. And again, the AWS definition is simple enough in this instance, so let's jump right down to that. A network access control list is an optional layer of security for your VPC that acts as a firewall for controlling traffic in and out of one or more subnets. So let's make a quick note here that your default VPC already has a network access control list in place and associated with the default subnets. So to find and modify your network access control list, we can either click on network access control list here or under security on the left hand side, click on network ACLs. Here we have our default network access control list and it does have the four default subnets associated with it which we can view here that they are associated. Now in terms of how it fits and works inside of the VPC it really lies between the route table and any of these subnets that are associated with it. So when traffic comes in through the route table before it goes into a subnet it will hit the network access control list, or if any information is leaving a subnet, it will hit a network access control list before being able to move on to a route table. So specifically what we wanna know about network access control lists is that they have both inbound and outbound rules, and those are separate categories, meaning you can have certain rules for inbound traffic and other rules which can be different for outbound traffic. Now, it is very important to know that for the default network access control list, which is the one right here, which has been created for us, all traffic is allowed in both directions by default. So if we take a quick look at these rules here, which I will explain in a second, for both inbound and outbound, there is an explicit allow here, which is going to be evaluated first and allow all traffic through. So if we want to provide any security on the subnet level, we're going to have to modify these if we continue to use the default network access control list. Now, how do these rules work? Well, for inbound and outbound rules, there are rules that govern how these work. The first rule that you should be aware of is that rules are evaluated based on rule number from lowest to highest. Second is that the first rule evaluated that applies to the traffic type gets immediately applied and executed regardless of the rules that come after, meaning have a higher rule number. So that may be a little hard to understand right now since we only have two rules that are in here and really only one rule that we can modify. So this rule having a number of 100 is allowing all traffic type under all protocol, all port ranges from any source. Underneath here is a rule that we cannot delete, modify, or edit, and this is considered a catch-all. And what that means is that if we don't specifically allow traffic, it is going to be denied. So if I were to edit this and remove the the allow all rule, then all information now coming into the subnet will be denied. And I cannot remove this. So if I want any data to be able to enter, or if it was an outbound rule, to leave a subnet, I must explicitly add a rule allowing that through. So here, if I add a rule, let's call this rule 80, and I'm going to make this HTTP, and I'll allow it from all sources and leave it as allow. I'll click save. Now for data that's coming in that is type HTTP or basic web traffic, it will come in to the network access control list and the network access control list is going to start evaluating from lowest to highest. So it's going to look at this and say, 
okay, here's our first rule. Is our traffic type HTTP? And which is going to say, yes, it is. And what is the rule? The rule is allow, and it's immediately going to send that traffic through, regardless of what comes after it. So to detail this more explicitly, let's add another rule. We'll put this as rule number 90. It'll be an HTTP rule from any source. And this will be a deny rule. Let me click Save. So even though now I have a rule that says deny, any HTTP traffic is still going to be allowed because again, the first rule evaluated that applies to the traffic type gets immediately applied and executed and rules are evaluated based on rule number from lowest to highest. So that HTTP traffic comes into the network access control list. It starts to work its way down the list. It gets to the very first rule, HTTP, allow, it allows it through regardless of whether or not this deny rule is there. Now, if I were to switch these numbers, if I were to put the deny rule to 70, now any HTTP traffic that were to come into the network access control list would be denied because this would be evaluated first, it would immediately execute that rule and the traffic would be denied regardless of the fact that after it, we have an HTTP allow rule. So these properties apply both for inbound and outbound rules. So now let's talk about our default versus a new network access control list. And before I create a new network access control list, let's just go back here and switch these numbers around. We'll put this back to 90 so that HTTP traffic can come in. So now again, we are allowing HTTP traffic into the subnet. So we'll create a new network access control list by clicking on create network ACL here and we'll give this a name. I'll call it essentials, essentials NACL. Click create. Okay, so now we have a new network access control list. And one of the things that we wanna be very clear about here is that when you create a new network access control list, by default, everything is denied. So if you look here, there's no allow rule for inbound and outbound rules. Everything is set to deny as where with our default network access control list, it did have an allow for all traffic for both inbound and outbound by default. So it's just something really important to remember when you first start using your AWS account in case you have any sort of connectivity or restriction errors when trying to access either the internet or items placed inside of your VPC. So right now, both of these subnets are currently assigned or associated with our default VPC since we have all of our subnets associated with our default VPC. So right now, HTTP traffic would be allowed into either one of these subnets. But if we were to switch this or associate one of our subnets with the new network access control list, all traffic would be denied since we don't have any allow rules in our inbound or outbound rules. So if I were to go to associated subnets, click on edit, and select one of these subnets. I'll select this one here and click save. We're gonna see here that this number is gonna to change to three and this is going to become one. So now that this subnet is associated with this network access control list, no traffic can come in or out because there are no allow rules. Now, if I were to add a few rules, let's say I'll put this at number 90 and we will put this as SSH and we will allow from all sources. We'll click save, allow, and we'll do the same thing for outbound, 90, SSH, allow. So now on our new network access control list, SSH will be allowed both in and out of the subnet. And then our catch all here at the bottom will deny all other traffic. So if HTTP traffic were to come in and we're to go this way and we're to go to this subnet, it would be allowed in. But if it were to go this way, the HTTP traffic would be denied because it would look at this rule and say, 
does that type HTTP apply to this rule? Say no, because this rule is for type SSH. Then for all other traffic, there is a deny rule. So I know we spent a lot of time on the nitty gritty here of using network access control list, but security is one of the main things that you really need to know when starting to use AWS, specifically not from the standpoint that people are gonna to try to hack or get into your system, but more from a connectivity issue, meaning that when you start to provision EC2 instances, RDS instances, databases, and really start to use other services, things like network access control lists may be a hidden barrier for you in that you may not be able to access something and you don't know why. And a lot of times it will have to do with either network access control lists or security groups, which is something that we're gonna to touch on in a future section. So making sure that you have these set properly for the type of traffic that you want to use can greatly increase your security, but also it becomes an area that you have to be very mindful of in terms of making sure that the connections are correct for traffic to move freely. So again, I just want you to be very mindful of how traffic flows through a VPC from the internet down to the subnet level, and then from the subnet level back out to the internet and the role that network access control lists play in that. So Again, to recap on the network access control list definitions is an optional layer of security. So you don't have to have security set. You can just set to allow all traffic and then you're not having your network access control list do anything for you. But if you are hosting, say, just a web server, then maybe the only traffic you want to allow into that subnet would be HTTP and HTTPS traffic. Not allowing any other traffic to get into your web server would just heighten security, and that would be considered a best practice to only allow the traffic that is absolutely required. So a couple of rules and details we're just gonna know and recap is that rules are evaluated from lowest to highest based on rule number. The first rule found that applies to the traffic type is immediately applied regardless of any rule that comes after it, meaning it has a higher rule number. The default network access control list allows traffic to the default subnets and also from the default subnets. And any new at network access control list you create will deny all traffic by default. And subnets can only be associated with one network access control list at a time. Now, if you remember when I associated the subnet with this network access control list, it automatically removed it from this network access control list and assigned it to this one. So a subnet can only be associated with one network access control list at a time. And a network access control list allows or denies traffic from entering a subnet. Once inside the subnet, other AWS resources, meaning like EC2 instances, may have additional layers of security for themselves, meaning security groups, which we're going to talk about in future lessons. But just always remember that it's network access control lists which provide access on the subnet level. And with that, we will complete this lesson. Thank you for watching. You may now move on.